Welcome to Crappens. Don't wait a week for a new video. Join our Patreon at the Crappens On Demand level for instant recap access. Link in description. Enjoy the show. Hello and welcome to Watch What Crappens, a podcast about all that crap on Bravo that we just love to talk about. I'm Ben Mandelker. Joining me today is the wonderful and hilarious Mr. Ronnie Karam. Hi, Ronnie. How's it going? Hi. Good. Uh, part two, Below Deck Down Under. Yes. So this is, we're recapping episode seven of Below Deck. This is a pretty serious episode. It's a very serious and pretty intense episode of Below Deck. Probably one of the most intense ones, if not the most intense one I feel like I've ever seen. And it was really, really, really powerful. So we're going to recap that shortly. Um, just a reminder, uh, every other week, it's essentially the first and the third of the month on Mondays at 5.30 p.m. Pacific, we are doing Crappy Hour which is basically our call-in show on Instagram Live. So go follow us on Watch What Crappens, at Watch What Crappens, and at Ronnie Karam, and at Ben Mandelker on Instagram, so you can participate in that. I'm sure people will probably have a lot to say about this very episode uh, on our next one, which is going to be in two weeks. We just did the first one, so it's up there on Instagram right now. So go check that out, and uh, be sure to check out our videos on Patreon, patreon.com slash watchwhatcrappens. Videos go up there first for a week, and then they go up to YouTube, so support there. Um, so anyway, we already just we just finished recapping episode six of this so double header intense. episode. So I was watching this on Peacock, so it was automatically uh, divided for me, these episodes. And I guess you watched on Bravo, so they had them sort of shoved together. But yes. this new episode, we've just seen all of this, like, assaulty crap happened with luke which was really disturbing the producers had to come take force luke to leave margot's room when he was getting into her bed naked uh during a blackout okay so that's what's just happened so that show's ended then the next show starts and we get a close-up of two jellyfish swimming <laughs> next to each other gorgeously and it just stays on them and they're like pulsing you know because those fish yeah. are fucking beautiful right and so they're just like pulsating and then it goes Boom! <laughs> Below deck, down under. It's like yes, <laughs> yes, yes. Je jellyfish. Establishing the tone with jellyfish. I love that, more... that they were like, "Let's get the most dramatic B-roll we've got." All right. Did we already use the old lady eel that's pissed off about people being <laughs> on her lawn? All right. Find something. Find something. They're like, "We've got this jellyfish action." Yes. So um, Luke has basically just been kicked out of Margot's room. He got he crawled into her bed naked while she was trying to sleep. And after not only she said no, but also um, Aisha and Zarina told him not to go in there. And now the producers have said don't go in there. And he slammed the doors on the producers fully naked, finally out of there. And now he's gone into his bedroom. So Laura, of course, Laura, the, the great addition here, she goes to Luke's room and it's like, Luke, what did you do, Luke? What did you do? And he's like, oh, get in. He he's like, slams the door on the camera because the camera's followed her in there. And so then she goes in. And she goes, like, honey, what happened, Luke? What did you, what happened to you, poor, poor, sweet Luke? And he's, he's like, like nothing, nothing, fuck them. It's just, what did you do? And he goes, I didn't do anything. I was just sitting there. Fucking hell, mate. You were just sitting there. You were naked in her bed in a blackout when she was passed out, you drunk fuck. Like, yeah. what the hell? Exactly. And by the way, let's not act like this is the first time this has probably happened with Luke. Based on the way he planted that kiss on Margot that first night that they met, like, this is some, not someone who respects anyone's personal boundaries. So... Laura's like, you know, I understand, but let, let's go out. Let's go out. And he's like, oh, I don't care. You can't. I'm not going it. So um, now Aisha goes to check on Margot. And Margot's like, I'm okay. Because Margot's like, she's out of it. Like, she's wasted. She doesn't really know what's going on. And Aisha's like, well, we had a power shortage. And I turn around and um, I don't even want to do her voice. <laughs> it's like, it's like, so she's like, listen, we just had a power shortage. I turn around and the producers uh, are screaming, get out, get out. And Luke is coming out of your room naked. And she's like, what? He was naked. Gross. And she goes, yeah. Did you consent to him being in here? And she's like, no, I was asleep. I did not invite that. And she's like, yeah, that's why I'm not comfortable leaving you here. Like, this is mm -hmm. bullshit. You know, and she gets into bed with her. She's yeah, like, I'm not leaving you in here. God knows what that fucking guy is going to do, you know? Yeah. It was like, um, it was like, 
it was just like such a it was just a lovely gesture that she just gets in you know, and she's like with her with her stew and she's like i'm not having any of this shit and margo's like i don't even know like you can see like margo like it's starting to really dawn on margo a little bit but as much as it can be while she's wasted and then meanwhile upstairs we're in the hot tub and laura gets in and this is this is like watching this it's like you're dumbfounded because we have downstairs, we have a situation of a complete violation of consent. And then upstairs, we now have Laura getting like getting into the hot tub with Adam and being like, hey, Adam, I have no bikini on. And he has like said so many times, no, I just want to be friends. And then this is happening upstairs. And I was like, what is happening on this boat? Well, especially that she saw it. She basically knows what happened downstairs. Like she yeah. knows, you know, she knows the gist of it. She knows that he was, the producers had to come and intervene in a way that he's pissed and naked in his room. So she knows that much. She knows that something bad happened with that. And it doesn't affect her at all. She's just no. like, I'm just going to do the same shit to somebody else, you know? Now, obviously the, the difference is Adam isn't blackout drunk, but yeah, uh, still she's fucking disgusting. And Serena's like, you know, this girl's not taking the hint. It's like, go get some dignity, you know? And Laura's like, don't worry. We're not going to have sexual until charts are over. And Adam's like, oh, God, you're getting a no, honey. You're getting a no, homie. So yeah. Says. And then we see downstairs, Luke is, he's so drunk, he can't even get into his bed. Which really, it just, again, it just shows that, like, if the producers had not intervened, we don't really know what Luke would have done. And I don't believe it would have been anything good because this was someone so wasted that he has, he doesn't have control of his body enough to get into bed. So I don't think that he would have the control to have restraint and say like, I shouldn't cross any lines, even though he's already crossed the line of being in bed naked with her. So then Luke is still trying to get into the bed and then upstairs, Laura is hanging on Adam and like kissing his neck and he's, everyone's kind of grossed out by her. <laughs> and she's like, we're not sexual, right? Only friend. And he's like, oh my God, watch yourself, stop it. And he gets up to sit on the ledge to get away from her. Yeah. And then we cut to Aisha telling Serena what happened with Luke and Culver goes to bed. He's trying to go to bed, but Luke has locked the door to keep the producers out. Like, right. They're not trying to just like disturb you. They were trying to disturb you in the middle of assaulting someone. You fucking God. God forbid his boundaries get crossed. Like exactly. his bound. Like you know. Like oh, he can lock his door. You know, and like he has a right to have privacy in his mind, and yet he can also like go climb naked into a woman's bed, a woman who he went and like just kissed on the first night when there was no indication that she even like was down with that either so um now harry so when we're in the, back in the hot tub the hot tub you have harry you've got laura and you have adam and harry's like well i think i'm gonna go to bed and ham's like yeah i'm gonna go too and laura goes oh now it's time for a massage then he's like He's like, no, because yeah, Adam even goes, yeah, if you're going to go to bed, Harry, I'm going to go to bed. OK, because I'm only out here because of you, bro, to be honest. Like, I'm only I'm only sitting right here because I want to talk to you. And Laura's like, OK, time for a massage. It's like, oh, <laughs> gross. It's like, like, come on. And she goes, no sexual, I promise. And he's like, OK, you promise then? OK. So he gets out and he's like, I'm locking the door. But he doesn't. And Harry's like, if you're locking the door, I'm going to come now. So. <laughs> Adam's like, she's not getting the point, so I don't know what to do, because she's got to stop that shit, because, like, we work together. So she follows him into the room, and he's like, oh, my fucking God with you. You're not staying here. She goes, no, I'm not. He goes, I'm going to kick your ass out. So he gets into the top bunk, and she's yes. like, oh, no, you are up there. It's so hard up there. You know that down on the in the reef, that, that Maury Eel is like, bitch. <laughs> that Maury is like, I've seen her before, bitch. So Adam is like, he's up there and she's like, but, but can you come down? And he's like, no, that's Harry's bed. She's like, you can't come down. Cause she, her, she's like trying so hard to create the situation. Right. And Adam was like, he's, he's like not allowing it. And so, and then, then he's like, you know what? This is a bad idea. We shouldn't be doing this anyway. But she's like, no. So she crawls up onto the bed and starts like squeezing the lotion on his back. And then find the cameraman was like, uh, hey, Laura, I got a message from the producers and you have to come down. She's like, OK, I'm coming. But she doesn't come down. Yeah. And they're like, no, seriously, you need to get down right now and go to your own cabin. And she's like, 
okay, I'm coming. And then she she keeps massaging. And then she like leans down and starts kissing his neck. And he, the producer's like, now, Laura. And she's like, I'm coming, I'm coming. So um, Harry goes to bed now, and there's drama music. And we see Luke and Laura. They show us, okay, they show us in one camera Luke, and then in another camera Laura, and then under them, a reef shark. I was like, <laughs> okay. Right, nice. Way to make the reef shark look like the actual like well, decent person here. I know, yeah, I know that the, the reef shark has some issues, but we don't know that the reef shark did anything co comparable to what these fuckers just did. <laughs> no. Like, can we leave the reef shark out of it, okay? The reef shark is like, I actually just went through some uh, training, and I would never do these things. Right. Um, <laughs> so, now, so now Isha goes and knocks on Captain Jason's door, which was like... Like this was also impressive that she didn't wait till the morning. She just told him right away. So she's she and she's crying, and he's like very alarmed. He's like asking what's wrong, and she's like, "I need to tell you about something that happened tonight." And she says she tells a story. She says basically we came, we came home tonight, and I felt like Luke was wanting to take advantage of Marco's drunkenness, and she was pretty out of it. And next thing I know, the power goes out, and Luke is running out of Margot's bed naked, and she was completely unconscious. And he's like, did anything happen? Is she safe? And she's like, well, now he's freaked out because he got caught. So he locked himself in his room. And now Culver is locked out of his room. And she's just crying, you know? Yeah, and he's hugging her. It was like, really, it was like, I was like, oh, God. And I was like crying. I'm watching this. I'm crying. Yeah. And, you know, Aisha's just saying, I feel like a lot of women have had a history with this, things like this happening a lot. And it stresses me out if I ever see anyone taken advantage of. Because she called that shit right when it was going down. You know, mm -hmm. and she had also been with him when he was saying, oh, yeah, you know, I shouldn't have fucked that girl, but it's not my fault because I was drunk. So I didn't even know what I was doing. So she already knows that he's one of those who's going to like mm -hmm. use that as an excuse, you know, yep. and get all assaulty, which is exactly what he fucking did. Then she saw it in the van on the way over with him staring into her face all low and yep. like trying to get. Uh, consent in front of people by saying, oh, yeah, you want me to come tuck you in later? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, just fucking disgusting. And she spotted that and she stayed on it the whole night. I was like, it was standard that ovation. is fucking impressive. And I really hope that makes things change. Yeah, uh, and she wasn't scared show, of like know? repercussions or like no, upsetting him or anything. Fuck. She was like, yeah. no, this is wrong. And she says that like, you know, that it made her skin crawl. And she's like, you have you don't have the right to put someone unconscious into that position. And she says, I've had a drunken sexual assault experience before, and I never want that to happen to anyone else. And Margot's like a sweet angel. And the thought of her of of him violating her or being in her space just makes me feel sick. Yeah. So then Jason's like, well, he's getting the fuck off the boat. You know, this isn't happening yes. on my watch. So he marches yeah. down, he gets a key, and he goes to the room, and he's like, get up. It's time to go, you know? And he kicks his ass off the boat. He's like, you're going yeah. to a hotel. And Luke's like, I don't need a hotel. And he's like, come on, you're going. And get your fucking Harry Styles pearl necklace mm -hmm. ass down here, you know? Fuck. I loved it. Jason just went in there and he was like, this is not a thing like we're going to wait till the morning. He was like, you are not even spending another extra second on this boat, you yeah. know, more than you need to be. You are getting off of here right now because now all the women are freaked out, by the way. And, you know, and Zarina is comforting Asia because Asia is fully rattled. And she just explained, uh, you know, like how she's been through a similar experience. So this is probably drudging up all sorts of terrible emotions for, for Asia. Yep. And so Harry, so now it's the morning and Laura's opening a beer because Laura, a fucking chorus, right? <laughs> so Culver goes to Luke's room and he's gone. So they don't really know what's happened yet. And Margot is talking to Laura and Laura's like, oh my God, I'm so happy. I feel great. And Margot's like, wow, lucky you. And then they're in their cabin and Laura just passes her and goes into the bathroom and just chugs the beer in the dark, not realizing there's a camera that she's doing it right into. I mean, this yeah. fucking idiot. So then Margo's like, so what exactly happened after dinner? Cause Luke got into my bed naked and that's weird. And Laura's like, what's his dick standing? <laughs> Were you lucky to lucky enough to have his dick standing? And Margo's like, uh, I don't remember. And Zarina's saying that she does not feel comfortable having Luke right across the hallway, you know? And and it's just like, yeah, you don't fucking go into a coma girl's room naked. 
And so Laura's like, oh, no, you think that he's in trouble? I'm like, God, Laura. Like, the I... The amount of suckage in her personality yeah. sh is shocking because she even prepares you. She's like, I'm the villain of this show. I'm going to be an asshole. I'm going to make every terrible decision I can, and I'm going to do every wrong fucking thing I can. Right. And she still manages to shock you. It's amazing. Her assholery is. is astounding. I mean, but also like it, do. wow. But she also you, you shocked but she, even me. Yeah, exactly. But she also represents in many ways like the insidiousness of the patriarchy. And I know when you say the patriarchy, it just sounds so dramatic, but it really is true. Like, as she is, as we see, she like is someone who def like defends Luke, and it's like absolutely repulsive. And we start, we're seeing the glimmers of it here. So Margot is now texting her mom and her sister that she needs to talk with them. And then uh, Jason's telling uh, Aisha that Luke has been kicked off the boat. And then the deckies are sort of like, they don't know where Luke is. And they're just sort of like bumbling about because they're like, well, what do we do? Like, should we start doing things? Like, where's Luke? So like they sense that something is awry as well. So then the, the so Aisha has the stews now, right? So Laura sees Margo and Aisha standing there. She comes in. She's like, good morning. I feel fresh as fuck. And Margo's like, Which, so. Which, by the way, I'm sorry to interrupt. What was this all about? Was this her way of countering that the day, yesterday she said she was so tired? Was she trying to recalibrate from that? Because what was that all about? She, she was really trying to sell that she was awake. I think that she's drunk. I mean, she's just drinking. I don't think <laughs> she's just drunk. She's a, like she's just oh, walking okay. around drunk saying like, I'm feeling great. It's a great morning and everything's totally normal with me when she's fucking plastering herself still in the morning, you know? And mm. so Margo's like, so what happened last night? And Aisha's like, well, basically. And then she just looks at Laura, who's preening. She's like, oh, I feel great. And she's like, uh, do you mind if I talk to Margo by myself? You can start with cabins. And so she sends her away. And meanwhile, Jason calls up Culver and tells him to take over for the morning. And he'll tell mm. him what happened later. And yeah. so then Serena comes with Margo and Aisha to talk in the cabin about. Mm -hmm. And so Aisha's like, okay, so basically last night I had a feeling about Luke, an off feeling, and that's why I wanted to stay with you. So then I go make noodles for one minute, and next thing I know, the producers are knocking on your door going, no, 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 and Luke is in your bed naked, you know? And so next thing I know, he's like coming out of there naked. And she's, Margo is like, she, you just see the look on her face, like how was he? How long was he in there? Like what happened in there? You know, and the fear, the fear of like knowing, like how close it could have been to such a worse situation of like what could have happened if there had been no producers producers if there hadn't been a tv show like how like you can just sort of see all the things running through her mind of like the other time she's gotten drunk and like wow like like you just you just sort of see her world changing in that moment and it's like it's you're sort of getting chills watching it so she's like yeah you know i woke up feeling weird and um i knew whatever happened wasn't okay but then i'm like oh god he's still here so i have to act cool so i'm glad he's not here you know because that would have been hard and mm -hmm. she's like i feel so stupid and serena's like you shouldn't feel stupid he feels stupid and she's like yeah but i was drunk and she's like yeah well women should be able to be fucking blackout drunk mm -hmm. like a woman should be able to stand up naked blackout drunk and not be afraid someone's gonna do something to her like you're allowed to be drunk that's the other person's problem and i cheered you that know, was I like such like a powerful little, moment yes. And then they, the three of them hug. It was so powerful. It was like a really wonderful moment. And I was so glad that was articulated, not only just to Margo, because I think it was important for Margo to hear that, but I was glad it, like that, that it was put on the air. Uh, not that it wouldn't be put on the air, but I'm glad it was spoken on this show. Uh, that was such, such a powerful moment. And then the three of them hugging together. Um, and I really like, you know, it, it just, I don't know, like I, it, it gave me chills. So, um, so now Margo... Margo goes to the bathroom and she's um, she's going. I think this is when she's calling her her speaking to her mom and her sister, and and she's saying to us that she's feeling disappointed in herself. She's embarrassed. She's sad and she's shocked, and she's like processing. But she also feels loved. But then she's when she's talking to her sister and her mom, she's talking about how she's just like so grossed out and she feels really stupid. And she's like, I probably was being too flirty, which is like the shame, like that, like 
that that's what that's the emotional toll that she has to take on and like as so many people do in these situations and her mom and her sister are like outraged and they're like it's not your fault um but it's like it's heartbreaking it's heartbreaking to, to watch her feel these things when she did nothing wrong yeah so the decades are still looking for luke and um so there's a a crew meeting called in the main salon so they all gather and laura still is walks <laughs> like, right up and tries to oh, fucking cuddle with adam i'm so fucking sick of this i wish awful. they would just fire her on the spot like <laughs> i know she just gets more disgusting with every fucking shot of her i can't it's disgusting and there's like i was like laughing uncomfortably while i was watching it being like i can't believe this woman is continuing to like sexually harass Adam at a consent meeting. And she doesn't know it's a consent meeting, but like only Bravo would 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 serve us this fucked up situation, you know? So um so she's all up on him. And, and so he's like, get off of me. She's like, I'm <laughs> sorry, I'm just feeling really good. I'm working on it. And she pats his upper thigh. She's fucking disgusting. <laughs> so then the captain is like, listen, uh, we're bringing Luke on. He's going to collect his fucking Harry Styles pearl necklaces, which, by the way, when you see a fucking guy wearing one of those, stay away from him. Have we mm. ever seen a good one? The last one on Bravo was Corey fucking Kiefer, that piece of shit. OK, so when you see that and it's not on Harry Styles, walk away. Just yeah. walk away. OK, just walk away. consider that your warning sign. <laughs> Pearl, pearl necklaces. Just get, just go. So, um, uh, so Jason's like, uh, basically, uh, I've told Luke he's gonna be gathering his items. We're going to terminate his employment. We had an incident last night, and I want to stress that this is a place where we respect each other. Our cabin is our safety zone. The door is our boundary. That door is not to be opened unless it's consensual. To walk into someone else's room without consent, that is my limit. And Culver is like, holy shit, that's insane. I have a little sister. I would kill somebody if, if she was in that situation. And um, I mean, I appreciate his sentiment. I think that we've learned that like you should, whether or not you have a little sister, you should still want to kill someone in that situation, metaphorically. So I know right, he's, but he's just identifying with the protective feeling, you know. And so Laura's like, are we allowed to say goodbye? I was like, oh my God, <laughs> really? <laughs> to your career <laughs> i think that will be happening wow he just announced to the entire room that luke violated consent and is getting fired and you're pouting about it in front of the fucking captain especially like what the fuck dude and he goes no and she goes copy copy <laughs> So now the minivan shows up and Luke gets out and Jason just takes Luke down to the crew mess. He doesn't even like let him come into the salon. He doesn't give Jason, a, um, I mean, doesn't give Luke a moment to like apologize or really say anything. And Luke is like, Luke is then doing this bullshit thing. He's like, well, I don't really know what happened, which is eating me up a little bit. <laughs> no, you don't get to be eaten up a little bit by this. So the captain's like, well, last night boundaries were crossed and you went into someone else's cabin. And he goes, and I was naked. Yeah, Luke. Shocker, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Shocker. Um, isn't it, Luke? You, you can't remember, huh? And he goes, mm -hmm. yeah, and I have nothing to do but terminate your employment. And he goes, okay, well, I can understand that. And he goes, so get your stuff. So mm -hmm. to his credit, he just keeps his fucking mouth shut. He does. You know, he, uh, he knows he keeps his mouth shut. He just does what he has to do. He doesn't protest. He doesn't push back. And Zarina's up there being like, why don't they just shove his stuff in bin bags, leave it on the dock, which I agree. I don't even think you should, I'd say throw it down there, give it to the Moria Yil. So, um, then Laura, everyone's just sitting there awkwardly, but Laura's like really sad. She's continuing to pout over this fucking, you know, attempted rapist basically. And Harry's like, oh, I feel really bad for Margot. We've got to care for her the next few days. I'm like, yeah, you should. But also, like, you two get out of her face a little bit. Give her some space. Well, Laura's, yeah, I like that, though, because she goes, I'm sad. And goes, you're sad that he's leaving? I feel bad for Margot, not him, you know? Mm. And so the Luke, the Luke, Lucas tells the captain, I'm so sorry. I'm just so disappointed in myself. And they all watch him leave. Jason, and just, Adam's, just, Jason just goes, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, like, what do you want? <laughs> and so Adam's like, "Fuck that kid," and he goes, "You so do something like that, you lose respect. You're you're a piece of shit to me now. All right, even more than goofy with the fucking <laughs> weird language." So then the captain's <laughs> like, "Okay, guys, you know boundaries. It's very simple. Don't cross them, male or female." 
He's like, we need this place cleaned up. Now, Kulva, you step in and we'll get someone in. And uh, so he's like, we should be able to do this, right? So, okay, we're already one employee down. So mm -hmm. let's see how much worse we can make this. Yeah. So, so now um, Laura, so, so now Laura, this is after the meeting, Laura is like crying. Okay. And she's like, I am so sad. I can't believe Luke is gone. And Marco is like, you're sad. I'm not. She goes, you're not. She's like, no, I'm bummed about everything that happened. And Laura's like, oh, I don't even understand what happened. Handsome man wants to make woman bride. What is wrong with that? And Laura's like, do you want me to tell you? And she goes, if you're okay with that. And she goes, okay. He came into my room naked. He got into my bed while I was passed out. Like, I was just sleeping. Like, what would have happened if no one had been there, you know? Like, I don't know. I'm still kind of processing it. And Laura goes, oh, poor Luke. I should just have kept him happy. Because if he comes in my cabin, I would be like, hello, yes. I mean, oh, oh my, my God. God. Oh, poor my Luke. God. Poor Luke. Also, by the way, in your theoretical fucked up situation, Laura, you, where if you say hello, yes, yeah, that's called consent. But Margo wasn't saying hello, yes, and that's the big difference, okay? Oh Fucking my God. The, crazy. That she even town. said poor Luke. Poor uh, Luke. What's even. What. What's even crazier, okay, even if you don't pick up on the social cue, let's just say, okay, maybe this girl has some trouble picking up on social cues. They just had a meeting and literally said what happened and consent was violated. And then Margot tells you in her own words, and you still say that? Like you're still said, dumb enough Luke. to say that? What the fuck is wrong with this person? My God. And then Laura goes, well, it's his fault because he rejected me. And he yeah, goes, she goes, if she had not done that, I would still be with him. And I said I would make him regret, and it came true. Very big time. It's his karma. It, he's not the victim. It's it's not his karma. It's, he's not the victim. He didn't get fired for rejecting you, you fucking yeah. idiot. Oh my God. It literally, like, Margot is the victim here, and all she's concerned about is Luke's feelings and that this wouldn't have happened if Luke had done this and if Luke had done that, Luke would have been happier. So she goes, oh God, and then he wants to come back for his bags and we can't be there. We say goodbye, we can't say goodbye. And you Margo's know like, yeah, I don't really need to say goodbye to him. And then she cries. And Margo's yeah. like, what the fuck? How are you the one pouting right now? And Laura's like, well, we all feel bad, but he feels the worst right now. I massage him, I, I <laughs> massage him. Margo tells us, she goes, she's fucked up, I think. I think she's just <laughs> fucked up. <laughs> just the way she delivered that. She goes, yeah, she's, you know what? She's fucked up. I think she's fucked up. <laughs> I actually love that response because I like that Margo was not like, I mean, maybe Laura's right. She was like, no, actually, Laura's really fucked up. Like, yeah, that, so like, she's... this girl, like, literally has problems, I think, you know? So... Laura, I mean, Laura is fucked up. Like, it, it makes me like very concerned about what her childhood was. So Asia is now talking to Adam and Asia, um, who's ironing by the way, you know, and not Laura. Well, Laura's over there crying and pouting that she didn't get to like a massage somebody goodbye. Um, Asia is ironing a shirt. So Adam comes in and she's like, so how did you feel about that chat? And he's like, it shouldn't have even come close to that, you know? And she's like, well, exactly. And on the flip side, I've noticed Laura has been pretty intense with you. And I want to make sure that you're feeling okay, too. And he's like, yeah, I mean, she thinks I'm playing around, but I guess I need to be more serious when I tell her to leave me alone. Which he doesn't have to be more serious. He like if he, he has made it abundantly clear. So Aisha's like, yeah, it's like, yeah, I saw her. But I have your back. So I was like, wow, Aisha is just like, she's killing it. She's killing it with like being a leader right now. So now Margo's wearing a tinfoil hat <laughs> because, you know, naturally. Um, and so she's wearing a tinfoil hat and Culver's like, hey, you rock that hat. And Harry's like, that's Margo, tall, blonde, and beautiful. And she's like, oh, stop it. No, literally stop it. This, I had a really rough day. I don't need you piling onto it. Thanks. So then we see Culver trying to be lead deckhand, and it's so funny. So Adam's like, so Culver, what you want to do, man? You're the bosun, baby. Might I suggest, listen, I don't want to boss anybody around, but I suggest your first order of business is going, Hawk! 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 
And Culver's <laughs> like, all right, well, here's what we're going to do. Uh, if y'all need anything, you know, I'm open, baby. Okay? So you got a question. You know what? You got concerns. Then you just do what you do. That's what you need to do. Guys, you know what you're, you should do? Stay tight. Show must go on. Break a leg. Um, when it's a maybe, eat a Dutch baby. Okay? <laughs> that's, that's, hey. that's my advice. All right, guys. All right, Harry, you like clean or something over there or pick up a rope. And Adam, you go over there and you like wipe a surface or you move a cushion. I'm going to go into the kitchen. I'm going to eat about five eggs, maybe a Dutch baby, maybe a different kind of baby. I'm sure there's babies all around the world that could be made into pancakes. And when I come out, we'll reassess. Okay, guys? And he tells us, I'd love to be bosun one day. You know, it's a great opportunity for me to really step up and do it because I'm in sports, so I can motivate. It's like, okay, I love that everybody who's played football a couple of times is like, I could be CEO. I've played <laughs> I <know>. football. <laughs> wow, congratulations. Yeah. Congrats. I'm sure those Congrats. lacrosse skills will work out great in uh, washing the boat. Uh, is that his thing? I think it was, I'm sure it was all of the above. I think for some reason, I think he was a lacrosse player, but I'm sure hot. he played football too. I know hot. Yeah. So Zarina is now, I loved this too. This is such a small thing. And it was like, I think it like warmed everyone's heart. Cause I saw a lot of people talking about it on Twitter. Cause you know, I was like on below deck Twitter last night for like an hour. So Zarina's making, she's making chicken soup and also, you know, um, flapjacks. And she's basically like, what happened was not normal and it's shocking. So I'm making comfort food to make everyone happy because I know everyone needs it, especially Margaret. And I was like, this is like literally like warming. Like this is just like, that's what you want. And like, there just, there was something like Zarina was not a major player in all this, but like the way she came in to support were just so. She was a major player, I think. I mean, she, well, meaning was, that she was in the van being like, no, she's right. You can't do that, you know? And she's telling Adam like, that's not right. You don't have to take this shit from her. And then she's giving her like, you're not so, you don't need to fucking excuse yourself for being drunk. Like no one has a right to talk, to do anything to you just cause you're drunk. I was like, yes. I mean, I yeah. yassed her so many times. I was like, wow, it's. Makes up for all the bowls of brown mush. <laughs> Like but, I literally finished the episode and I was like, I need something brown and brown liquid. <laughs> you're like, you're like, I'm, I'm vegetarian, but I'm going to eat a tomahawk tonight. <laughs> but um, no, what I meant was more like, you know, Asia and Jason had active roles in this of like reporting and firing, et cetera. And like Zarina was, was supporting people. And like the way she did it was just so perfect, like pitch perfect. And like, even just the act of making, a warm bowl of soup in like a moment like this is so thoughtful and just also the exact right thing to do, I feel. So, um, let's see. So Laura and Aisha now. Okay, now oh, let's God. see Here if we can go. make this even worse. Oh, I can't no. imagine this could get any worse, right? Surely <laughs> we're gonna have some chicken noodle soup and everything's gonna be fine. <laughs> Raise your hand, people in the audience, if you were like hiding your head under a pillow during this next scene, because honestly, I was wa I was like, I could not believe what I was watching. And it also makes me sad to think that there are many people like Laura in this world who say these things. So Laura comes in to Aisha and she goes, Aisha, I don't even understand what happened. We don't get to say bye or nothing. And she makes a cry face and Aisha goes, no, I'm sorry. <laughs> and she goes, but was it that bad? And she goes, um, he crossed the line and that's what would happen on any boat. You know that, right? And Laura's like, he's dead serious. I mean, fuck. That's a shock for me because I didn't know it was that bad yesterday. She goes, yeah, you can't ever cross that line, you know, so, yeah. And Laura's like, oh. I'm like, Captain Jason should give him a chance, give him a warning, something. But to fire is not fair. It's not deserved. And I don't agree with it. Well, you're hmm. not the captain of any ship. She like, good luck to it. Hmm. <laughs> yeah, she does. Good luck to the employees of her uh, alleged restaurant that she had in Spain. One table. Department. I can. Un I'm starting to understand the the name of that restaurant. 
<laughs> so yeah. um, Margot comes to laundry where Laura irons, and Laura's like, Margot, did you hear me? And she goes, what's wrong? And she's like, I don't think it's fair anyways. I feel sorry for you, but I just think it could be warning. I don't think it's like, I don't know. I just, I'm sad. And I think he just meant this joke. Like, he's a funny guy. I don't think he meant bad. Like, he wouldn't rape you or anything. You're what do you think fucking somebody while they're passed out drunk is? The, like, and she's saying this to Margot. Like, now potentially Margot could hear this and it undoes all of the support and bolstering that she's received. And now Margot is thinking, like, it's her fault. It's her fault that someone got fired. She shouldn't have complained. She shouldn't have been flirty. All the, I like the, 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 audacity audacity of of laura to say this specifically to margo it's bad enough just to say it but to say it also to the person who was the victim here and laura's like he's a sexual person i'm a sexual person you're a sexual person we were joking that thing was probably like ha 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 ha, ha. we all drunk right now i'm like she was like margo's like i don't know about no i don't know about that and Laura's like, well, it's not as if you said no to him the whole night and he didn't welcome coming to you. He felt welcome coming there. Oh, okay. So, Just get her off. So Margot okay. let her on. That's what she's basically saying. Yes. So let Margot's like, uh, I don't think so, though, because Isha said she don't go in there and don't go in there over and over. And I, she said I'm really drunk and passed out, so I'm not really sure... So she just leaves like, what the fuck? And thankfully, Aisha passes her. And she's like, so she's mad at me now? Like, what the hell? And yeah. she's like, I just told her what happened. And she didn't know. And the first thing she said was like, oh, well, he should have hooked up with me and come into my bed because I would have welcomed that. And then she said he should have. he's just a sexual person and was just joking and that none of this was fair. Like, I don't even know what to say to that. Aisha's like, this is so inappropriate. It's Aisha's hor face. Aisha's, horrified. Aisha's face like, was like, oh, <gasps> oh, her jaw was completely on the ground. Like, are you fucking kidding me? Seriously. Oh, my God. So then we go back to Culver trying to figure out the deck. He's like, well, we could put a chamois there or maybe not there. Or should we put a chamois? mop there and <laughs> adam and harry are like uh adam's like uh up till now i was uh looking to culver as the most experienced person on deck but uh looking like a little bit look a bit like twiddle d and twiddle dumb okay it doesn't put me at ease i'm like okay adam you're not putting me at ease but let's not forget you still you still can't swim okay this is this is a good episode for you okay but generally speaking you're a terrible deck hand so let's yes. calm down so then Marge goes into the galley and sees leftover wine and drinks it, which is also a sign of things to come, you know. It makes me like, nervous. Uh, uh oh. So she's like, I don't know if this is going to make me more emotional. Probably. Who cares? And she drinks it. So then Aisha goes to the captain and she's like, Yeah, now I think you should have a personal chat with Laura because Margo just came to me upset. And instead of asking if she's okay, she had the audacity to say, I wish she'd come to my bed. And now she's making Margo feel like shit about having a problem with it. And Jason's like, After what I just said? Yeah. My, are you fucking kidding me? What about me says no authority? Am I wearing a kimono jumpsuit? <laughs> like, what the fuck? So it's just like, and she's like, and by the way, Laura with Adam, like he's not comfortable with her and she was very inappropriate with him and borderline sexual harassment. I'm like, I think it was not borderline. I think it was full on. And he's like, uh, I feel like I've told her no when she's not listening. So Jason is is not happy. Meanwhile, cut to Culver eating Zarina's ribs. Like, get back to business down in, in the kitchen. He's like, concentrating on getting the protein in while the guys are working, you know? So he's already, <laughs> like, slacking off because he has people under him. And so Serena's like, you've been a person before, have you? Big, strong rib eater. And he's like, yeah, I have basically, well, basically, a lead deckhand, which is kind of the same thing on different sized boats. But you know what? No matter the situation, I'm going to hunt. Mom won't be a leader. <laughs> Just caught a ball. Just caught a ball that was coming towards me. I'm in, in a little net. Actually, you know, I learned how to play lacrosse because my mom would attach a Dutch baby to a stick and I'd just go run around the woods catching pine cones. 
so Jason is now Jason has called up Margot and asks if Margot's upset and she's saying that she felt like what Laura said was really insensitive and Jason's like to actually come back and say that to you of all people there are no words for it you heard what what I said down there it was wrong we're a team we're moving forward I'll take care of the rest so at this point I'm thinking oh he's gonna chew out Laura that's where I think it, I think he's like Laura's gonna get like a pretty bad reprimand right because it sounds insane it sounds insane to like like you can't fire two people like right. you have to do a charter right so now adam is called to the bridge and he asks about laura and he's like yeah you know she's in my space like hanging on me and i don't want to be rude and make her feel embarrassed so i say no in a playful manner but she won't stop and he's right. like all right we're gonna make it good so now you're like okay she's really gonna get yelled at yeah um so, um, and then meanwhile, we just uh, have another check-in on Culver doing more like quasi bows and stuff. He's and like, Harry's so like, you guys going to do uh, <laughs> this thing? Ma <laughs> yeah, that Mopping. thing. Do it for the, uh, the, the, what do you call the floor? The teak? Yeah. You know when you, <laughs> when you wipe the floor with a lacrosse stick, but the lacrosse stick sort of has like a wig on? The mop? Yeah, they're like, yeah. Uh, you're just, why are you cleaning the window with a rib bone? <laughs> <laughs> Harry goes, Culver lacks the one part of key part of being a leader, which is initiative. I'm like, yes, because we definitely saw last season Culver got really lazy. But that being said, he's also been a bosun for about 25 minutes right now. So I think we could like give him a little grace period to step into the role. Uh, uh, yeah, but at the same time, he's been bosun for 25 minutes and already had ribs. You know what I mean? <laughs> That's true, too. <laughs> <laughs> so Jason now calls Laura to the bridge. I was like, "Oh, she's gonna get a she's gonna get a real talking to, you know." And Jason's like, "A couple things I need to talk to you about." Adam feels uncomfortable with some moments out and about, and he's tried to say no, and you've not listened to him and his boundaries to be set. And the second thing is, after my multiple speeches with the crew about boundaries and respect, did you not go into Margot and say, "Poor Luke, I wish I wish you would come see me." And Laura's like. Uh, but actually, no, I went to her and I said, how are you feeling? Are you okay? Because I'm, 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 I'm very awake right now and I was never tired yesterday. That's what I, I said. All I've said to people on board is I'm not tired today. I feel so good today. <laughs> Did you just burp? Not, not been drinking beer. <laughs> so Jason's like. She's not okay, and that's not okay, and they feel like there's now a big disconnect now, and that's not what I want for part of my team. You disrespected exactly what I actually set out to do. And she's like, no, I understand what you said, and I respect it. Massage time? You want massage, Captain mm -hmm. Jason? I massage you. And he's like, you will not massage me. And listen, for you to go to Margot, that shows that you have no respect for Margot. And I'm trying to move forward as a team and trying to get behind this, you know, and you've brought it straight back up. So that said, I'm going to terminate our employ your employment today. And she's like, like wow. <laughs> and I just wrote, ha, ha, ha. Like I was laughing and cheering. <laughs> this episode really gave so many different emotions. I was like, yeah. Yeah, I was like, I was like. I was like cheering, but I was also like oddly choked up because I would think I was like really caught up. I was caught up by like the strong leadership. I was caught up by like, the justice of it all, of people doing the right thing and people having people's backs and like, like really making sure like there's no room for someone to make someone feel unsafe. It like it made me oddly very emotional. There's also a part of this after watching Below Deck for years you know and so hundreds and hundreds of episodes of this show there have got to be now right to see everything that has been put up with i think it makes you feel like everything that has been put up with just as a people like as us you know what i mean you're like yeah look at this shit that was just considered normal for so long it's sad it's yeah. fucking depressing. Like it really is. I mean, I've like there's guilt. Like I felt guilt as a viewer. I was like, look at this shit that has just gone by. Not that look like, like we haven't ever said anything about it or anything like that. I'm not trying to make it about us. I just mean as an audience member, it's like, wow, this shit is really bad. And seeing people stick up for it and actually treating it as the um the wrong that it is is extremely refreshing and it's also a little guilt inducing i have to say 
Yeah, well, I think way. I think it's really, um, I think that Asia and Captain Jason, as has been said a million times on Twitter, if you go look, that they they really showed what it's like to be true leaders. They stepped into action. They recognized situations. They did. They they just they they just they they took actions and they they did something about it, and it made me really happy. I was also this is a reaction that we similarly had on Below Deck Adventure when Captain Carey, there was a, there was that asshole on there and Captain Carey just kicked that guy off. He said, nope. And it was just that clarity of, of action that was very comforting, I feel like. And, um, you know, it, but again, it, it, it's like it was a bittersweet moment because for a moment like this, you know, there just are thousands where there is no Asia and there is no Captain Jason and there are no producers and there are no cameras and there's there's just victims. And so I think that made me sad too to reflect on... And there are on, so many Lauras. And there and are so, so many, many people who after something like this say things like Laura does, you know? Yeah. And you hear that all the time. So to hear people strongly saying, no, <laughs> that's wrong. Mm -hmm. And shut the fuck up with that. Get the fuck off my boat is extremely refreshing you know with no ambiguity about it yeah like there's this is a black and white situation this is not a gray area there's no both sides on this one right it's this right it's not a wrong. well you let him on by being drunk mm -hmm. that's not how the world works and it's nice it's nice to see it it uh, is said uh, yeah. so i was cheering i loved it and so now they're like, well, we let Laura go. <laughs> so, <laughs> but now Laura. Anybody else we should fire, you know? <laughs> now Laura, uh, she doesn't leave in the same uh, swift manner as Luke. She's like, but I don't think I did something wrong that I need to be terminated. I mean, can you give me a warning? Should I do can can dance for redemption? And he's like, Nope, I can't go on with you as part of the team in this environment. It's that I'm trying to set. She goes, but I think it's a mistake. And he just goes, okay. <laughs> yeah. Glad like, you think okay. it's a mistake. Doesn't really yeah. matter what you think. Yeah, I think uh, changing the recipe of Girl Scout peanut butter uh, cookies was a mistake. But guess what? They still sell <laughs> that shit in front of grocery stores every season. <laughs> I mean, I have a lot of thoughts on mistakes in this world, and no one gives a shit. No one cares. <laughs> Bye. No one cares about my thoughts on mistakes. Bye now. So <laughs> she passes by Asia and says nothing and starts packing her stuff. And um, Jason calls up Asia, and he's like, let, let that idiot go, okay? So now what should we do? She goes, oh, so she's packing up. Well, that's the right call. Um, so she's I'm sorry, like, man, you I just want to say also, let's also put the, I just want to also mention the sacrifice that this is that knowing that there, there are someone down on the deck and now there'll be someone down on the interior and knowing that this could really fuck up their next charter or two and that this could be hard on everyone, but that sacrifice is still worth it. And there still was not even a question like that. It's the safety of one person is worth it for the discomfort and the stress that everyone will have to deal with as a whole. Like that was a deeply reassuring moment too. Sorry, just wanted to put that out there too. So Aisha is uh, telling Margot that Laura's out and she's like, you know, we just want you to feel safe. You've done nothing wrong and she's an asshole for making you try and feel like shit. And uh, Margot's like, wow, it feels like a weight's been lifted, like a hundred pounds, you know, it's just lost immediately. And so Serena comes up and you know, they all basically celebrate and well, they, Serena's, like, like, <laughs> Serena's, Serena's like, like what's fuck? up? <laughs> you know? And she goes, so are you getting a new student? She goes, yes, but not yet. And Serena just starts cracking up. She's like, oh, ho, 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 ho. <laughs> she's like, oh, this is fuck. This is great. So uh, Jason then checks on Laura, you know, because she's packing and she's like, I don't deserve this. And he's like, all right. Can I grab you a bag? She goes, mm hmm thank you. She's like, I don't deserve this, but I will have you still carry out my bag. So um, Aisha now tells the deckhands that Laura's been let go. And Adam is, is like, well, I feel bad. You know, I would hate to think that I aided her in getting fired. That made my heart drop. But to be honest with you, I thought I was really nice to her. But it's like, that. see, that's what sucks with sexual harassment because, like, you wind up feeling bad for your harasser when they have no concern about you and how they may be creating a distraction for you. And now you can't do your job in a safe or focused way. 
So um, Adam's like, yeah, you know, even when she said, can I say goodbye to Luke? I was like, wow, that's bad. You know, <laughs> I know that's bad. And Ace is like, yeah, you guys, we're a team and um, we need to work together as a team. And if there's shit like that happening, it's best that we just nip it in the bud right now. And Culver's like, so you guys are going to go down a girl? Jesus Christ, are you serious? I want to need some protein for this. <laughs> I'm really going to need some protein. I need another egg. So Laura gets in the van, and the good news is that at long last, Laura finally gets some perspective and learns her lesson. Just kidding. Of course she doesn't. She's like, I think he's making a big mistake, and there's no real reason. Give me a warning. Talk to people. Sit down. Don't just fire. It's not good leadership. That's zero ship. All right. No, bye, that's you your current job. Zero ship. <laughs> bye, yeah, asshole. Bye. Yes. Um, so and then, what and you then said she, about and then, karma before, let's <laughs> hope that there isn't any. Yeah. And then she like she just like drives off and like everyone's on the boat is like, wait, is that Laura? And they're kind of like waving, like, uh, bye, I guess. Oh wow. This and Harry goes, She's this industry is quick. This is this all isn't interesting. Like this morning, I was like, hello, good morning, and now there she is, bang gone. God, what an ass. So so, have, so you were looking at Twitter and stuff. Did you see how she reacted? Like, did she say anything? Because I'm sure people were coming I didn't for her see, like crazy. Did you I didn't see, see Luke's anything. Reaction I or went her to, reaction. I went to Luke's Instagram, and Luke was he had posted something two days ago, and the thing I don't remember what it was, but the thing two days ago, he's like in Dubai, and he was just like, all his comments are disabled. And the thing he had posted was was something sort of like, yeah, it was like people think they know you, they don't, something like that. And I was like, wow, you're so fucking tone deaf because you know what's happening about, you know what episode's about to drop on the show, and you're putting up this defiant thing instead of like being ready with like a even some sort of bullshit like working on myself thoughts and you know like you know totally yeah love and light like giving up drinking like he doesn't he doesn't even have some sort of like stupid thing like that up he just has like a defiant post from two days ago so i was oh like this guy's God. a piece of trash but yeah. also so laura laura's just been fired so you were you watch this on peacock i watched this on youtube tv so this has been incredibly intense and emotional and really going through a lot of stuff watching this and there are a lot of people who are probably deeply triggered by this entire episode and so we go to commercial laura's gone off we go to commercial it's like hey what's going on please welcome alex newell and sandra bird icons only icons only icons only and i was like oh my god like could, <laughs> if there's any evidence that they're not watching below deck on watch what happens live it was this because it was totally <laughs> such a lack of like acknowledgement of like the heavy ass shit the audience has just been watching. I was like, oh God, I'm embarrassed. Yeah, oh my God. That's funny though, because that is so that show. Hey, Sandra Bullock just had a home goods closed down in her neighborhood or something. I saw that, saw some clip of like, Sandra Bullock, how are you healing from, it was like a Ross dress for like something close oh, in her neighborhood or Bed her Bath & Beyond or something. Died. Sandra Bullock? No, <laughs> yeah, Sandra that's Bernhard? probably what that was. Sandra, Sandra Bernhard? Bernhard. I'm talking about Sandra Bernhard. You said Sandra Bullock. Oh, I meant Sandra Bernhard because she was the one who was on oh, Watch What Happens okay. Live, right? <laughs> okay, yeah. Because you Sandra said Sandra Bullock's Bullock. boyfriend died? Yeah, Sandra Bullock's boyfriend died. I just saw it yesterday. It's sad. Who was her boyfriend? I didn't know. He's a photographer. Yeah, so that's why I was like, well, when you saw it. Was... <laughs> we're back. Is that about the load that? that we'll just throw sad, everything Jesus. into this episode. No, oh I, wasn't make, I wasn't trying to um, shame you for not knowing, but I was just when you were saying like wow why why are they asking sandra bullock how she's healing i was like well that's why no probably. it's sandra bernhardt i think was the guest okay <laughs> sandra, anyway okay. sandra bernhardt having a ross close in her neighborhood <laughs> just please get me the fuck out of here my god okay so um they of course laura's dressed all cute in this little like pink thing it's like goodbye like waving out the window all happy and they're like wow uh it's quick in this industry eh harry's like i just saw it this morning and now she's just gone. It's crazy. It's like, yep. That's so how now another works. crew meeting. And uh, Jason's like, okay, well, we've fired somebody else. <laughs> so uh, we do we all understand boundaries and empathy? Have we got that down? Great. All right. <laughs> it's like, all right. So uh, we, have a, we have a new, you know, 
officer coming in, second officer coming in, but uh, this is going to put some stress on the interior, and uh, we're going to work on a replacement. So Clover's like, well, I think I did a good job while I had the, well, I had the, you know, while I had to step in, but naturally you feel some sort of way when you don't get that promotion. I'm like, it was an hour, Clover. <laughs> yeah, it was an hour, Clover. Okay, you had ribs. That was your you had ribs. Okay. So, um, Zarina is giving Margot some flapjack, and Harry comes in and he checks on her, and he's like, "Are you okay?" And she said, "Yeah, you know, it was a hard day." And he goes, "Yeah, it would have been." She goes, "What does that mean?" He goes, "It would have been if I were you." She goes, "Oh, okay, <laughs> yeah." I get it. <laughs> so then um, the episode comes to an end with Aisha checking with Margo at, at the end of the day in her room. And Margo's like, you know, you guys, I have never felt so much love and support. And I'm serious. This day has been so terrible. But at the same time, I've never felt so at home and safe. And they hug. And Aisha's like, no one fucks with a girl. And um, Margo just like thanks her for checking on on her. And like she just feels like she's had a lot of love in her life. And but un unlike anything like this ever before, it was really, really good. And um, overall, I just have to say bravo. Well done for once on this subject, because yes. there have been so many there have been so many dropped balls on this subject over the years. I mean, there have just been so many mangled seasons where these guys have gotten away with this shit. And it is so great to love Bravo so much and see Bravo do yeah. I such mean, a we've, good job. I mean, it was it was well done, you know? We I have thought. just we've lived through so many seasons of misogyny of of like, I don't know, for example, like Remember there oh, was God. that that oh, uh, episode Please. where Joao called Hannah, you know, the C word. Speaking um, of. Oh, you know what's so funny? <laughs> the mid-season trailer came out. <laughs> so this mid-season trailer. Okay, so now look. All of this all of this stuff that we've just <laughs> talked about aside. I of course ended the episode like, okay, well this is what ha this is below deck, right? So they they set it up with terrible people, the terrible people get fired. A lot of times what happens is the terrible people get fired and then the show kind of falters cuz there's no villain, right? Now with Luke, it's like get get him off. With Laura, I was like, wow, what are they going to do without Laura? She's been the villain of this entire thing. Like she's really made the season go, I think, yeah. her villainy. And uh, I was worried as a viewer. I didn't want them to keep Laura. Don't anybody get mad at me. I'm not saying like Laura didn't no, deserve it not. or anything like that. But as a viewer, I was like, oh God, I hope it's not boring now, right? It's like it after they got rid of Camille. Boring. Oh yeah. my God. The season trailer looks so good. I, mean, <laughs> I was like, my God. I was like, how could you do this to me? Question mark. Like I like we just got through those two hours. I was like. Whew, I can exhale. And then I saw that trailer and I like, I fully tensed up again. I was like, oh my God. And Joao is back. And Joao, like Joao's second season, he was like, I'm nice Joao. I'm from Zim. I'm from Zim. And this first season I was terrible, but second season I'm like nice sensitive Joao. But he looks like he's back to being a full on asshole. And I, I, I was like, I, I, I was like, I actually texted you in the middle of the night. I texted you at like two in the morning and I was like, I was like, this trailer, <laughs> it's going to destroy me. Oh, my yeah. God, the season. Why are they burning through it so quickly? It is so good. I mean, not that, like, it's good to watch what just happened, although I think it's. In, I think in some ways it was good to see it. But overall, as a season, I was like, oh, my God, I can't even imagine what the next half is going to be like. It's going to be fucking insane. I mean, they really were like, okay, next, next round, let's do this. And they're going for it, so... We'll be here with the rest of the season as it comes, so keep joining us. Thank you for joining us for this lovely two-parter. I mean, they're all two-parters right now for Below Deck, aren't they? Because yeah. they're double episodes a week. Uh, tons of other stuff going on. Check out um, our Crappy Hour if you want. That's our new live Instagram show every other Monday. You can see that on our Instagram. We'll try to figure out the audio for that to start posting on audio. If you want videos, Crappens On Demand on Patreon. Our bonus episodes this week uh, was a... This week and last week was two parts of Big Brother cast preview. So we've got a ton of stuff going on. Dwell Hello comes out next week. We've moved it to next week. So that's our House Hunters recap. So just, just be with us 24 hours a day. We love you. Bye, everyone. Bye.